It's week four of the 2023 Laundry Basket Quilts Mystery Quilt. You may or may not have noticed that I didn't upload a video last week, and that is because I was having some uh, production errors, some um, technical difficulties, and uh, the video just didn't come together. But don't worry, I'm going to share last week's block in this video. But first, I want to talk about my little um, fabric conundrum I'm dealing with. For this week's block, I need four really long strips from two different fabrics and that has turned out to be actually sort of a problem because I have a lot of pieces that I've used and then I have some grays that I'm saving in case we do more leaves or stems and on top of that I have some fabrics that even though I haven't used them yet they aren't long enough because of the selvage or just because they're cut short for whatever reason. So that's been very frustrating and annoying and basically left me with these three fabrics. And these three fabrics aren't necessarily fabrics that I would have chosen for this block, but you got to do what you can with what you've got, right? So um, there's a couple things I like about both fabrics. So this one basically is a done deal. I'm definitely using this fabric, so I have to decide between this stripe and this deer fabric. As far as the deer goes, I like the high contrast between the dark purple and the light purple. Although I don't want to use this uh, fabric again cut down tiny, I would rather use it in a bigger piece. And then this striped fabric, it's an ombre. It doesn't quite go with this purple. It's just a little bit off. And in my opinion, um, sometimes when fabrics just clash just a tiny bit, it can add some visual interest to your quilt, as long as you don't overdo it. So that is kind of a plus and a negative at the same time, because I'm not sure quite how it's going to work in the finished quilt. Although I am curious, I'm probably the most curious about this combination, these two. But either way, I cannot choose. I'm, I have decision paralysis between these fabrics. Um, I'm not really looking forward to either combination, but it has to be done. And when it comes to these kinds of decisions that are hard to make, um, I like to bring in a little known quilting tool, the six-sided die. <laughs> so I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it be up to chance. If I roll an odd, I'm going to use this fabric. And I, if I roll an even, I'll use this fabric. <laughs> so let's do this. Okay, <laughs> striped fabric it is. Now that this decision has been decided, I want to show you the blocks I made last week. On Instagram, I saw that people did several different kinds of uh, choices. They did two only two different colored blocks three different colored blocks all the way up to five different colored blocks but i stuck with the three that was recommended in the pattern so i have a light i finally got to use those dogs that dog fabric i have a medium some of that gold i don't know if that camera is picking it up there's gold on there and i have a dark so all in all last week was super simple it was just a nine patch done with strip sets. On a sort of silly note, I got to use that skull fabric for the center of my flowers and it sort of uh, it tickles my funny bone a little bit because I remember reading an article about a poison garden once where every single thing in the entire garden was poisonous. It gives me a little chuckle to think I have a sort of a cheeky little dangerous flower on my quilt top. But there you go, I finally got to use that fabric. Before I move on, I want to clarify how many of each piece we need. Um, my original pattern had a bit of a typo, so what you actually need is four strips of each of these colors, so eight total. And then from your background color, you need eight large triangles and 16 um, smaller triangles. And this is where I tripped up. I accidentally did 16 squares instead of the eight squares to get 16, so I ended up with 32. Uh, triangles. I was not paying attention. It was very frustrating and annoying. So don't make my mistake. You only need 16 of these triangles. So first things first, I'm going to be making these strip sets. And they're so straightforward that I'm going to sew them off camera. The only thing you really need to know is that you don't want to sew them um, so they're flush. The ends are flush. You want to do a little bit of an offset edge. 
And you can use your ruler if you need to visualize this. You just find your 45 degree line, figure out where you're going to get your the most fabric for your money, and then offset that amount. So here I have my pieced strip set. I've pressed my seams open for a change. Usually I will press them to the side um, so I can nest my seams, but since diamonds are pieced so differently, you can't really nest your seams. So I was like, maybe this can be a little experiment. Let's see if pressing it open is gonna make much of a difference. So here I have my ruler set up to get that first 45 degree uh, angled cut. I have the 45 degree angle here lined up at the bottom of the strip set. And I have enough room over here in the excess for my first diamond set. Now the reason I overcut is because I don't like to do that weird like bend and angle and cut towards myself move because I lose accuracy when I do that. So instead I do it this way. I'll make my cut. And then I can flip it and make the other cut so that I have my perfectly accurate unit. So there I have my first diamond unit and my strip is all set up for my next unit. And I actually like to cut at an angle with my strip going off like this and my ruler like this. It looks a little weird, but it just, it's easier for my mind to um, find the 45 degree and the line that I need to cut. So I'll just keep continuing like so. Oh, I need a new blade. So I'll keep cutting like that until I have gotten six units out of each strip set. Before you start piecing your diamonds, I want to point out that depending on how you orient them, you can get two very different looking blocks. So you can either get the dark in the center and the light on the outside, or you can get the light in the center and the dark on the outside. And I personally actually like this uh, little bit of, oops, this little bit of difference here. And I'm gonna purposefully make half of my units look like this and half of them look like this so that I get a little bit of a different finished block. Now, moving on to piecing diamonds. For those of you who have never done diamonds, they're not as straightforward as they look. And I would recommend you go check out my video, Piecing Diamonds with Precision. I made it just earlier this year because I made a whole diamond quilt. Actually, let me get it real quick. I'll show you. Ugh. They are not as simple as they look. And I encourage you to check out that video so you don't fall into some of those uh, traps. There are a couple different ways to mark your diamonds to make sure that these points meet up perfectly. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to show you my favorite way. And it's a little weird. I don't know if anyone else does it this way. So if you don't like the way I do this, definitely go check out that video and maybe you like one of those other ways better. So I have my two diamond units here and I've brought it over to my sewing machine because I'm going to use the needle to mark the point at which I want the, these two seams to meet. So I'm going to match them. doesn't have to be that accurate. We're not trying to match the point or the seams at this stage. We just want them to be lined up nicely along that edge. And then with my needle unthreaded, here's my thread. It's not going through the needle. I'm going to run it through my machine. So the point of this is to make little dots in the fabric. And depending on your machine or your eyesight, this might not be completely um, optimal. I think you can see just a little bit where the machine went through the fabric. So at this point, I'm going to take a pin and diamonds and I think curves are probably the only thing I use pins for. So I'm going to take my top piece and I'm going to insert my pin in the hole that goes intersects this line right here. And if, if there's not a dot that intersects, you just get to the closest one. And if there's not a dot that intersects perfectly, you're just going to eyeball 
along that line and I'm going to push my pin all the way through and then I'll take my next piece and I'll find the dot that intersects right here push my pen all the way through because you want this part to be flush while you rearrange the piece so the edges on top are aligned. Once they're aligned, you simply pull the pin a little bit and then push it back in like normal. So it'll look like this. Alternately, you can leave your needle threaded and then I usually bump my stitch length up a little bit and if you do this and you remove your thread, you'll have a slightly larger um, dot to look at when you're placing your pin. This is definitely much easier to see in person. But there's those little dots that help you align perfectly. So I'm going to re-thread my machine really quick. And then I'm going to bump my stitch length back down to normal. And I'll run this through. And uh, best case scenario, if your your seam allowance is correct, you're going to be sewing right in between this junction right here in this triangle. Although sometimes you're off here and there, nothing too bad, nothing to worry about. So I'll run this through. Before my machine gets to the pin, I'm going to use my free hand to hold the fabric down as if it is a pin itself. Take the pin out and then make sure that I'm still lined up back here. And then I'll continue sewing. And again, if your seam allowance is correct, you're going to sew right to the middle of that uh, junction. Then you open it up and you've got your perfect join. Your perfect, what am I, your perfect seam matching. So I'll do it one more time. So you see the lines of dots right here. Oh, it's so hard to show on camera. So I'm going to put my pin right in the intersection of that seam along that line and I'm going to push the needle or the pin all the way through then I'll do the same for the second piece you can't see the dots can you I can see them <laughs> and then I'm going to do the intersection again right there push it all the way through line up that edge then readjust the pin and if you want to save time you can definitely like chain piece this but if you just want to try out a couple just do a couple one at a time so I'll stop i'm going to push my finger right where the pin is i'm going to make sure this is lined up well and then I'll continue sewing. And then you've got your perfect matched up seams. And I promise it gets easier the more you do this. So don't give up. Do like two or three or four this way just to try it out. And if it doesn't work, switch to, I don't know, marking with a pencil. And again, check out my video if you want to see other ways to mark. So I'm going to take these to my pressing mat and I'm going to press them open. Now that my diamonds are pressed open, you can be pressing to the side, really preference here I think, um, I'm, I can finally put this block together. And just like I said, I've made units in the two different uh, arrangements. The dark in the center and the light in the center, and I'm going to combine them like this. Next I'm going to add my small triangles here, 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 and here. 
And lastly, my two large half square triangles, like this. So I'll separate it a little bit so we can see how we're going to be putting them together. So they're going to be three units, a rectangle and then two mirror image triangles. I think I'm going to match up all of my small triangles all at the same time. So what you want to do is match these sharp points together and you'll have excess going over the side here. Okay? And the same here, you're matching up the sharp points and then we're going to do the same thing over here match up the sharp points and get the cat hair off my cat is shedding and he has the fluffiest fur it just flies around like dandelion seeds and again over here sharp point I think I've mentioned before with this quilt along that I don't like to start with these points in my machine because they get sucked under really easily so I'm going to start from the sides and go to the point so I'm just going to arrange them like so and take this whole thing to my machine. Here are the pressed units and now we're going to add these two big triangles. This time we're going to align the straight edges here like so. I'm just going to fold it over so we're going to align the corners and the straight edges. No need to worry about the points. Since this is very similar to the small triangles I'm just going to go ahead and take them and sew them off camera. So close. Almost done. I'm still pressing my seams flat, but there is definitely um, an opportunity here to nest seams if you want to, if you press these seams in different directions. But I'm still, I'm just gonna do completely flat for these blocks. To finish up this block, I'm going to sew these two triangles together and then add the rectangle on at the end and press everything open. Um, I'm definitely gonna make sure I pay attention to these seams where the triangles meet or where the diamonds meet. But since I've been pressing open, I don't need to use my marking technique that I used before. I can just line up the seams visually, like so. And I'll probably use a pin or two to do that. But let's skip all this and head over to the finished block. I present to you two of four finished blocks. I've only done two because I need to get this video done and uploaded by the weekend. But this is how it's going so far. Um, a little word of warning, be careful pressing your fabric because I think I've pressed mine a little out of shape. You can see it's a little wobbly, or maybe you can't see it. But I think I did, I, was, I wasn't careful enough on these bias edges and I got a little bit of stretching. So don't do what I did, be careful with your pressing. But other than that, um, I'm pleased with them. The color combination isn't what I would have picked if I had more choices, but I think it works fine. And uh, these are definitely the weirdest blocks we've done so far. They don't look finished, really. It looks like they need something else. Maybe that's where the applique comes in or the English paper piecing. I don't know. But that was a fun one. Very different from anything we've done with these mystery quilts, or at least that I have done for these mystery quilts the past few years. And let me know in the comment section what you think about my weird marking technique. Do you like it? Is it too weird for you? Um, let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye!